In this video, I'm going to talk about array notation versus pointer notation in C. So very often it turns out that we can actually treat pointers like arrays and arrays like pointers. And we can use pointer notation with arrays and we can use array notation with pointers and it'll actually work out okay. So let's go over what's going on there just so we can understand what's kind of happening under the hood. So if I say here int a and I'll say three is equal to one, two, three, I'm declaring an array of three integers called a and what a really is, what a really is, is going to turn out is really a memory address. And when we access it with array notation, we're getting the values stored at that memory address and onwards. Now I'm going to say int star B. And what I'm doing here is I'm making a pointer to an integer and I'm calling it B. So I'm calling it B and it's a pointer to an integer. And what I can do is this, I can say B is equal to a. And this might be surprising because how can I like assign an array like this to a pointer to an integer like this? So arrays can often be treated like pointers and pointers can often be treated like arrays. When I do this here and I assign A to B, we say that A decays to a pointer. So it's actually going to decay to a pointer. And what that means is basically the memory address that A is storing is going to be used. And we're going to store that memory address in B. And if you do a printf of the pointer that B is storing and the, and the pointer that A is storing, we're going to find out that they're really just storing memory addresses. So I'm going to say here B percent P slash N, A percent P slash N, and we're going to output the pointer for B and the pointer for A. And it's going to turn out they're the same thing. So if we run this here, we get that B is this memory address and A is this memory address. So they're both storing the same memory address. And that's because A really, A really is a memory address. And it's the memory address of this, of this, of where these values are stored in memory. In this case, they're going to be stored on the stack. And when I say B is equal to A, what I'm saying is take that memory address, because pointers are just memory addresses. I'm saying take that memory address and store it in B. And so now B stores the same memory address as A. And this relationship between arrays and pointers allows us to use either array notation or pointer notation to deal with either one of them. Functionally, they're very often pretty similar things under the hood, but there are some, there are some differences and I'll go over those too. So what I could do, for example, is I could say here void print int star a. Now this looks like it's a function that accepts a pointer to an integer a. It looks like a function that accepts a pointer to an integer a, right? But what it also allows me to do is pass arrays to this function. This is also a perfectly valid notation for passing arrays to this function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, let's print out, and we're going to use array notation here. Let's print out a at one is equal to whatever it is. And we'll print out a at one. And then if I were to compile this here and run it, I'm going to have to actually call the function first. So I'll have to say here, print a here. But if I, if I compile this here now and run it, we're going to get that a one is equal to two. Now, how is this working that I'm passing an array to a function that accepts a pointer as a parameter, and then I'm accessing that pointer here that's a parameter as an array inside this function? How is that going? So what's happening here is that when we, when we pass a to the print function, it decays to a pointer. And what we're really passing is the memory address to print. Now print then has access to that memory address a here, and it's, it's, it's got that memory address stored there. And what I'm doing here when I say a one is I'm basically just accessing the data at that memory address using array notation and array notation. That's all that's really happening up here too. If I were to say up here, like print F and I said like, Let's print f a one here first. We'll say a one is equal to percent d slash n output a one. The same thing is happening here. Like this is actually the same process as what's happening here, where what's really going on inside a C is that a represents a memory address to this data here. And when we say a one, we're basically saying go get the value at this memory address over one integer. So like go over one integer and get that data. Cause in memory it's stored like this, like one, two, two, three. And when we say like 
A1, we're saying like, okay, starting from this memory address, go get the data that's stored one slot over according to how large the slots for integers are. And it's gonna go get, it's gonna go get uh, two for us and we output two there, right? And, and that's what's really going on there. So it's just kind of cool because we can use pointer notation with arrays very often. We can use array notation with pointers very often. So for example, I can also use the array notation with this pointer here, B. Because remember, B, like A, is just a memory address. So if I say here, like, print F, and I say, like, B1 is equal to, and I say here, percent D slash N, and I say B1 here, I'm using array notation with this pointer here, and it's going to go get the exact same value. It's also going to be 2. And it's just because the same process is happening is that B refers to this address in memory where these three values are stored. And when I say B1, what this really means is go get the value that is stored in one slot over. And it goes and gets two and we output two. And that's what's really happening. So that's array notation. Now we can also use what's called pointer notation. So we could also use pointer notation to get at the values as well. So we'll, we'll do this here. We're gonna say a printf, and I'm gonna say here star B is equal to percent D. And this time, instead of saying B, I'm gonna say star B. So instead of saying B and like using the array notation index, I'm just gonna say star B here. So star B, this operation here means dereference the pointer. It means go get what is at this memory address. Go get the value stored at this memory address. And B, like I said, stores, as does A, a pointer, essentially a memory address of the first value in this chunk of data here, right? And so when I say go get what B is pointing to, it's gonna go get one because that's the that's what B is pointing to. It's pointing to that first value there, right? And then if I clear this and compile this here and run it, we're gonna get that B is one, that star B is one because we go, we went and got what B is pointing to. That's what the dereference operator does. And it gives us one because B and A both point to one. If I did the same thing with A, it'll give me the same result actually. So I could say this, I could say star A is equal to percent D and I'll say star A here. And again, it's the same thing. Like A is also just a memory address that points to this chunk of data here. And when I say star A, what I'm saying is dereference this memory address. Go get me what is at that memory address. Go get me the value stored at that memory address. And it's also gonna return back one. So we can run this here and we get back one there. Now what's really cool is we can use pointer notation to access the different elements stored at that memory address as well. I should say stored beginning at that memory address as well. So we can also use what's called pointer notation. So I could say here, print F, and I'm gonna say here, star B plus one is equal to percent D and now I'm going to actually get star B plus one. So this here is called pointer arithmetic. So it's called pointer arithmetic. And what's going on here is when we add one to B, we're basically saying, go get the next memory slot. Go get the next thing. The next, so B points to here and B is an integer. And when we say plus one, we're saying shift over one integer and get what is pointed to at that position, get the value stored at that position that is one over. And I can do the same thing. I can say print F B plus two, and that'll print out the, the next thing over, right? So it'll go, it'll go from where B is pointing and it'll go two things over to three. And we can do the same thing with A as well. So we could say here, like, we'll say A plus one, A plus two, just to show that it works with A as well. So we can also use pointer arithmetic like this, it's called, with the array, and this will also work. So we can clear this, compile it, and run it, and we get, you know, B plus one is two, B plus two is three, A plus one is two, A plus two is three. And this is what's called pointer arithmetic. It's a type of pointer notation that allows us to get at values that are uh, in, the, in the memory that is, you know, pointed to by B and, and, and beyond. So we're kind of saying like, okay, take what B is pointing to, get the next integer over. Take what B is pointing to, get the integer that's two integers over. And that's that's pointer notation. Now there's some other things we can do as well. We could say like this, we could say B++. So if we say B++, what this actually does is it increments the pointer. And it doesn't just like add one to this memory address. 
what it does is it treats it more like this. And it actually shifts B over. It actually shifts B over and it has B point to the next thing. So instead of B pointing to this, B will now point to this. It points to the next thing over. So then if I say like print F, let's say print F, I'm going to say, let's do star B first. I'll say star B is equal to percent D slash N output star B. We're going to get two in this case. So we'll clear this, run this. And now we get star B is equal to two. I could also use pointer notation again. So I could say star B plus one. And I could say star B plus one. And this will also then point to the next thing over from where B is currently pointing to. So we incremented B by one. That has the effect of having it now point to two. And then when we say star B plus one, it has it shift over again once more. And now we're outputting three. And that's, that's pointer arithmetic. Now, pointer arithmetic, I'm not going to lie to you, even though it's kind of cool and it's kind of fun. I showed you this here. A lot of times it's hard to find like great use cases for it just because array notation is a lot clearer to most people. And it's just sort of a more intuitive way of accessing things. So pointer notation, even though it is a tool we have, it's not one you see used super often. I mean, one thing you could do is we have this, we have this print function here, right? We have this, this print function here and it's going to print out a one. So when I called print a, it gave the, the pointer for a right, a, the memory address for a, and it went and used array notation to get the next thing over. And the next thing over was two. And that's why we output, uh, we output two there, right? We output that a at one is, is two there, right? And, and that's, that's all good. What we could do is this, I could say, let's call print with a plus one. So let's call print with a plus one. What do you think is going to happen? So a stores one, two, three, this is going to get the next element over. And now I'm saying call print with a plus one. Let's see what happens here. We'll run this and we get a one is three. So what's going on here is that a is a memory address that points to this one, two, three, starting at one here. And this function points the next, it prints the next element over, right? So it prints a one, which is the next element over. So it's going to print out two normally. But what I did is I passed to the function a plus one. When I pass to this function here, a plus one, that's pointer arithmetic. And what's going on is we're saying actually pass over the pointer to this element here, the next element over. And then we go to print a one. Array notation actually has us referring to three in this case, because it's kind of like we chopped off the first part of the array and we're now working with this part of the array onwards. And so when we say a one inside this print function here, what, what, what it really sees is this, it really sees two and three and a is a pointer to two. And so when we go to print out a one array notation has us go one element over and we go to three. And so we print f a one three. So one area where I've seen pointer notation used is this sort of chopping behavior where we want to pass a array to a function and we maybe want to give it maybe like the last half of the array only. And so what we do is we'll give it like a pointer to the array and we'll kind of like add in the, the number of elements we want to skip. And then the, the function is working with, as far as it's concerned, an array but it doesn't know that the array actually started way earlier because it's only given a pointer to, you know, a certain number of elements into the array. So this, this all might make us think that pointers and arrays are completely interchangeable in terms of their notation. This isn't always the case though. So for example, like if I said here, int C3 is equal to, we'll say two, four, five, I might think that I could say like A is equal to C here and maybe A plus plus and we might think that this will, will work, right? And I could say maybe like printf, let's print out what A is, is pointing to, right? I'll say like A1 is equal to percent D slash N and we'll output here A1. And I might think this could all work because like, you know, really like A is a memory address we're saying, right? And it's a, it's a pointer sort, sort of thing in the, sense that it's, in, the sense, in the sense that it stores a memory address, but it's not really a pointer. It is still an array. It, there is still a bit of a difference there. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to say A is equal to C. 
I'm trying to say like, let's have the memory address A, let's have it equal to C now. And maybe like A will then refer to C. So if I were to say A++ now, you know, I should be pointing to four. And if I were to print out A1 here, I should be printing out five. And we might think that's how it's going to all work, but if we try to actually use this, it's not. So we actually get errors. It's not actually, it's not actually gonna even compile. Um, so it says here, error, array type int is not assignable. Count increment value type int three. So that's one difference between arrays and pointers is that I could assign to a pointer. I can't assign to an array. So even though like A is ultimately a memory address and B is ultimately a memory address, strictly speaking, they're not both pointers. You know, that's why we had to say that A decays to a pointer in this case, because strictly speaking, they're not both pointers. B is a pointer, A is an array. And yes, they're both memory addresses, but A is a memory address for this array here. And we can't assign to that memory address. So it, that's one of the differences is we can't like assign some other array or some other memory address to that memory address there. Doesn't work like that. And that's one of the, the differences between arrays and pointers. So even though they're often interchangeable, they aren't completely interchangeable. So that's really array notation versus pointer notation, or at least the basics of it. I mean, in practice, you don't really see too much pointer notation used because it is a little more confusing. Array notation is far more typical. And there aren't really that many, like strictly speaking, you need to use it pointer notation use cases where like you absolutely have to use pointer notation. So in general, it's not something you see that often, but it is something that is super good to be aware of because you will see it out there and you do want to know that that's an option. So this has been Array Notation versus Pointer Notation in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.